Hello and welcome to the Church of the Redeemer. I'm David Ware, one of the clergy there. I'm so glad to welcome you this day for our worship. You can follow along in the Book of Common Prayer beginning on page 78, or if you receive eRedeemer, you can click on the link that uh, Ellen Chatard has sent to you, which has the entire service um, on a, a, a document. I do want to call attention to the fact that on Sunday at 1030, we will begin a virtual coffee hour. And I hope that you will join us for that after the service, um, whenever you happen to participate in it. Join us for a virtual coffee hour, which begins at 1030 a.m. on Sunday and ends in an hour. Good to worship with you. Send out your light and truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. The Confession Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll read Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo, responsibly, by half verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mara, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door, and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened to the tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hastened to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, Am I waxed old? Shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also old? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee, according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. A reading from Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon of Canaan, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The word of the Lord. It's always a joy to be back at Redeemer. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We've all been very conscious over the last two and a half weeks of a number of disturbing things happening in our country and many hopeful things as well. And I've been mindful of the most important words that were ever spoken to me. They were spoken by Aaron's grandmother. Early on in my seminary career, my first year, I volunteered to be the youth leader in a predominantly black parish in Somerville, Massachusetts a small city north of Boston. All of the members of my youth group were black. There were about 20 active members, and Aaron was one of the members of that group. But I wasn't a stranger when I started seminary to civil rights involvement. Although I had grown up in an all-white suburb of Hartford, Connecticut, and had never met or talked with a black person until I went to college, very soon into my college career, I became very involved in the civil rights movement in Philadelphia. It was aided and abetted by a Quaker professor who had set up a relationship with Howard University, so that I spent a number of weekends at Howard living in the dorms, talking with students my own age, and hearing a story of America that was entirely different from the story that I knew from my own life. It opened my eyes to injustice, and really, this injustice and racial bigotry had gotten under my skin, so that the civil rights movement had become formative in my theological training. At the end of the uh, first year that I was this youth director in Somerville, Aaron's family asked me if I would like to join their extended family in an outing for Memorial Day for the whole weekend. And so I joined them, about 27 members of his family, in a camp deep in the woods uh, near Plymouth, Massachusetts. And it was a marvelous weekend. Friday night, we just sent around the the campfire and kind of talked, and I got to know some of the people who were part of Aaron's extended family. And on Saturday, I followed my nose to the kitchen because the most delicious smells were coming from a cooked breakfast. And there, at the wood stove, was Aaron's grandmother. I had met her in church a number of times, but I really didn't know her. And I simply said hello to her as I passed her, and all of a sudden, this four foot eight wiry little woman reached out and she grabbed my shirt and firmly but gently drew me down to her level. And she looked in my eyes and she said these words, you're very fortunate. We don't usually let white people become part of our family. And if you pay attention and listen, you will learn a lot. I was completely lost for words. I think I muttered something like, uh, oh, I'm sure. Well, I wasn't sure at that time, but I'm certainly sure now that this was the right advice. The right advice to a white person, pay attention and listen. It's begin, become the byword of my interrelationship with people who are different from me, not just persons of color. It's so important 
that we who actually are privileged and in many ways in the majority listen and pay attention and learn from people whose experiences are very different. This is really important in this present time. George Floyd's murder has sobered almost all of us in this country, but he is only the match to really start a conflagration. It's an important conflagration, and although over the years, because I have been disappointed so many times on our failure as a country to address systemic racism, I have hope this time. Hope based on the fact that many of the people who are demonstrating and marching are younger people. Hope in the fact that many of them are white people of varying ages. Hope for the fact that we may finally be able to listen to persons of color, to hear their story so it might change our hearts and change our attitudes. Now much has changed as a result of the civil rights movement of the 60s. A number of laws were enacted and a number of meaningful changes took place. But what I realized looking back was the thing that wasn't really addressed was the systemic problem of racism. And the reason it wasn't addressed is because white people have not been willing to really listen and pay attention. It's been hard for me as an educated white person growing up in privilege to realize that although I have answers, they may not be the right answers. That I need to listen to people whose education may be nowhere near as good as mine and whose experiences are very different from mine. I need to listen to them to find direction for how I can be helpful. I'm encouraged this morning from that wonderful story of Abraham and Sarah. It's a wonderfully primitive story in Genesis, a story where a woman can actually laugh in God's presence at God and live. It's a story of faith. The importance of Abraham and Sarah is that they are models of faith. And Abraham proves this in welcoming the three guests before he realizes they are divine, he welcomes them with lavish hospitality. And Sarah, of course, has been leading a life of great desperation. Not only in her day, but in the Middle East even now, married women who do not bear a son have a stigma. In fact, if Sarah lived in the Middle East today, in a country like Jordan, when Isaac was born, her name would have changed. She would have no longer been called Sarah. She would be called Sit Isaac, mother of Isaac. Now, we don't need to debate whether that's appropriate. It certainly wouldn't be in our culture that a woman loses her identity because she has born a son. But that's the reality of what we're dealing with. A Sarah who has been greatly disappointed and stigmatized and we know from other passages of Genesis, even derided by her own servants because she wasn't able to give birth. This wonderful promise comes because Abraham and Sarah are faithful. I really believe in this important time in America, if we can stick to it, especially if white people can pay close attention to the stories of black people, we will be able to work on correcting systemic racism. It's so important for our country. It's so important as Christians. We have proclaimed Christian values in this country from its very beginning. The equality of all persons, fairness and justice under the law for all. These have been high ideals, but never in our history have we lived up to them. Now is an important opportunity to pay attention, to listen, and to act on the basis of our hearts. 
This is also important from our gospel story today. Jesus sends out the disciples to proclaim the good news. You and I who are disciples of Jesus need to be proclaiming the good news by example and in word. And part of that good news is our willingness to enfold all other persons despite their differences as brothers and sisters, to listen carefully and to dialogue. One of the things that bothers me most in this country is the loss of dialogue. We've lost it in the Senate. We've lost it in the House. We've lost it in the presidency. People don't dialogue across their differences. They simply pontificate at one another. This is neither useful for a democracy, and it is distinctly not Christian. We need to sit and painfully listen to the people with whom we disagree. We need to share our stories too, but we dare not interrupt their story to give a brighter cast on it. We need to listen and absorb. That's why I've resurrected my Black Lives Matter. I bought this while I was your interim rector at Redeemer, at the time that Freddie Gray was murdered by the police. I bought it to wear with honor, and many of you joined me in being very concerned. I remember that right after his murder, on very short notice, 120 members of Redeemer, most of them white, showed up at a meeting at St. Michael and All Angels. And we began talking about wonderful ways in which we might open Baltimore to greater opportunities for, their, for our young people. And we listened to one another. But then, as so often has happened in our past, the busyness of life impinges, and those of us who have not had to live on the edge of social injustice find ourselves back, busily doing our work, and letting things ride. But I'm hopeful this time that as we wear the signs of Black Lives Matter, and when we talk with black people, that we will do so with an intention of finding ways that we can work together with them for change. Now, part of why I'm wearing my Black Lives Matter, too, is I want white people to come up to me and say, doesn't everyone matter? And of course they do. Everyone matters to God. But this gives me an opportunity to say, yes, but often, in many places, black lives have not mattered as much in this country as white lives. It also is a reminder to me personally of a particular black life, which has mattered greatly to me. Aaron's mother, grandmother. Her words still ring in my ears. We don't usually let white people into our family, but if you'll listen and pay attention, we can teach you a lot. Amen. We believe and trust in God the Father, maker and sustainer of all things, and in God the Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and in God the Holy Spirit, giver of life and truth. This is our faith. The Lord is with you. As our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, all Father, who art in heaven, or in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be my name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Be will done on earth, off, as it is, it is in wow. heaven. In heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen
Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern, govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Lord, show us your love and mercy. We put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite your prayers and intercessions either silently or aloud. And please join me in praying for Blythe Rizikowicz, Dottie Hopkins, Mary Baker, Cheryl Tillman, Eleanor and Peter Landauer, Fran Miner, Anthony Harima, the Martin family, Millicent Bain, Robert Harchick, Nick and Marvin Miles, the Fiji family, Mike Klein, Larry Eckert, P.T. Wagonseal, Jay Featherstone, Christopher Puttock, Abby Francis, Marie Hawkins Lucas, Rachel Brooks, Akira Hori, Midge Taylor, Kathy Sherman, Cheryl Nash, Yoshinobu Shiota, John Wilson, Betsy McDonald, Daniel Pesek, George Wills, Laney, Donna Lee Frisch, Francis Fox, Anne Clace, Jason Ryan, Monet Chantilly Ruby, for Barbara Stewart, Gail Hongladurum, Robert Lopez Jr., Jim Crowder, the Blunkist family, Janet and Eddie Dunn, Jean Judges, Charlie Evans, Molly McGoldrick. Please pray for our frontline medical responders, for Allison Dietz, Panagis Galiatsatos, John Waller, James Kusner, Liza Ayers Sedembrino, Charlotte Worthington, Jeremiah Hinson, Cozumel Southern Pruitt, Jerry Ferguson, Bill Cranick, Michael Allison, Eric Parvis, Hannah and Ed Rogenstein, Jake Abernathy, Christopher Reddick, Ali Tager Ramsey, Ian Ramsey, Ann Goldsboro, Tom McLaurin, David Cohen, Teresa Ross, Andy and Cammie Windsor, Connie Trimble, Reed Riley, Hardin Pantel, Phyllis Taylor, Morgan Wright, Kira, Lydia Pecker, Jess, Hannah Ware French, Ben French, Melissa Turner, Eric De Young, Eric Cords. Please pray for those who have died. Naomi Lewis Brooks. Ronald DeStefano, Lara Huff, June Finney, Cynthia Armbruster, Elva Hazelhurst, Michael W. Stoner, Carolyn Miles, Gertrude Thomas, Jean Giese, Eric Benson. 
and I invite your prayers for those who have died from COVID at our Build Sister Church, uh, our partner church, Sacred Heart of Jesus in East Baltimore. For William Carrias, Felix Zavala, Francisco Macias, Luis Cayamarco, Juan Portillo, Williams Romero, for Eden Diaz, Pablo Alberto Guerrera, Margarita Garcia, Susana Reyes, Margarita Rivera. And let us pray. Almighty God, who has promised to heed our prayers offered in your son's name, we ask you to mercifully hear us who have made our prayers to you and grant those things which we have asked according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, 
and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know him and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. If it's Sunday, please join us for a virtual coffee hour, which you can join by clicking on the link that is in the eRedeemer that was sent to you this morning. So just go back to that, click on the link, and I'll see you over a cup of coffee. Take good care.